and we're talking about network automation and how that relates to uh, your business. So I'm gonna get started with um, talking about Pac-Man and I'm gonna relate this uh, to your network so you can sort of think about what we're gonna talk about and relate that back to uh, Pac-Man to your business. So when we get started, we have uh, these ghosts and what I, what I like to look at the ghosts as is the malware in our network. So when we do this is we try and contain the malware outside of our network and the network in the game of Pac-Man is the entire game, right? So they start off in this box and that box is like our security perimeter. So it might be firewalls, email security, et cetera. Uh, the issue with that, it's, it's starting to fail us. Encryption is a thing. Uh, we're not seeing all of the traffic because of the encryption that's coming out. So how do we segment our network off to make it a little bit easier to, to work with? The other thing that we're doing is if we're playing Pac-Man and we put a blindfold on, it's super hard to beat the game. We just have zero visibility. This morning the keynote was talking about context and vis visibility. How do we bring that into our network? We'll talk about that a little bit more in depth today. The other thing is, uh, if I need help, what do I do? So I might call Mario, I might call Donkey Kong in this scenario. The issue is they don't know how to play the game of Pac-Man, so they're blaming each other. It's what it looks like in a multi-vendor environment. I call different vendors and they're all blaming maybe that product or this product's the issue and nothing's working together. So if we look at this a little bit different and we say, all right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have uh, Cisco security be our external perimeter and we're gonna have everything work together. Uh, I have a good friend, Jeff Peterson. He's gonna be speaking later today. He's gonna go more in depth about what we can do to uh, work together as an environment in a Cisco security. So uh, if I look at Pac-Man, what I have is we wanna do segmentation in our network. Uh, when we do segmentation, what happens is when I play the game, I like to do the bottom portion, the middle portion, and the upper portion. Well, if I can do the bottom portion and I have segmentation in the middle of that, I have this hard line across, I don't have those ghosts, I don't have those malware coming down in that section. So that's what we're trying to do with our network. We're trying to segment it off so we can contain and remediate the issues. Uh, the issue with this, if I have these hard lines drawn across, how do I beat the game? So now what I need to do is I need to open it up. So when I open this up, what I have is a uh, hole for us to get into. So now I have to start writing policy. So when I write this policy, I'm gonna say, the only thing that can get through these holes is Pac-Man. The ghost can't get through. So now I've created some segmentation uh, boundaries for myself. The other thing that we have is, hey, we have these uh, bigger uh, bubbles that we can eat. Uh, what if I could eat one of those and it was unlimited? Right? So we use that AMP product that he was talking about. We eat that bubble, now when the malware comes into place, we can have automation and context aware security actually take action automatically for us. So on top of that, if we actually wanna beat the game of Pac-Man, we might have to call for help. So the person I'm gonna call is gonna be Miss Pac-Man. She's played this game before, she knows what to do in this environment. So this is what it could look like in an, in an all Cisco environment when we start looking at network automation and bringing security along with it. So what are the challenges today? It's super difficult to segment. We're talking about segmentation and automation. Uh, I wouldn't be up here if everyone was able to do it and it was super easy. It's not easy today. To, uh, so what we have is we know that our endpoints are increasing. We have more things coming on the network and it's, and it's ever changing. So what I'm doing is I'm creating more VLANs. I'm creating more access lists. What this does is it gives us network sprawl. So what that gives us is complex management. I have to go to multiple places to touch the network to actually start giving us security on the network. Multiple touch points uh, causes multiple issues. So when I have that, I have slower time to resolution. So I might have John, he's calling the help desk and saying, hey, I can't get to this main application server. Uh, what are the chances that the help desk person that took that phone call can actually solve that issue? Because I have so many things going on in my network. That's what we're having issues with today. So what we want to do is we want to transform from CLI and we want to automate our network. That's what really matters. So when we look at this picture, we have basically horse-drawn buggies. That's where a lot of us are at today. Does anyone have automation in their network today? Raise your hands. No one's raising their hands, so everyone's here because they have zero automation, right? Um, what we have is we got to a next level. We maybe introduced a couple things. Maybe some people were pushing out software updates or patch management. Maybe they started that off. So that's like having a, mo a car, right? Well, where we're at today is uh, autonomous driving. We can do that today. That's actually a solution uh, that we can actually offer right now as, as we're talking. So uh, no one raised their hand, so this is probably gonna be a, a, a lot of interest in how do I actually get to that phase. So. When we first looked at networking in the past, your networks were designed for 
voice, video, and data. That's what mattered, okay? In the last couple of years, networking has changed significantly, but most people haven't upgraded the network. So when I look at networks today, we have to deal with mobility. We have iOS devices coming into place. Uh, BYOD, those are all things that are happening right now. How do I deal with that? Um, IoT, uh, what are we doing with security cameras? HVAC systems, these are all things that are coming onto the network. How do we segment them? How do we automate that process? Uh, they were talking about cloud and multi-cloud earlier today. Uh, fantastic conversation, but if I don't have a network or I don't change my network to support that, none of the stuff they were talking about is gonna work. We have to change the network if I'm gonna go to that architecture. And then uh, security is the biggest factor of everything, right? Security is a board level discussion. We have to have our network have uh, security entrenched in the entire thing. But what really matters to the business is the user experience and our applications. So if we have a poor user experience for our applications, somewhat the end user is gonna go somewhere else. So everyone looks at Amazon, Target, Walmart, they've created world-class user experiences. Uh, I'm a Prime member, I order something, two days later I have it on my front door. The likelihood of me going somewhere and actually going picking that out is, went down drastically because the experience is so great. So when we look at this is, uh, right now a lot of our engineers, they don't have time to repair the fence. They're too busy catching chickens. So what do we mean by this? You have issues that are happening every single day in your network and you're too busy trying to fix those small issues that you have never fix the actual underlying issue of the whole thing. So what we need to do is we need to get back and do a proactive network operations. Instead of being reactive to what we're doing, we need to become proactive and give time back to our network administrators so they can actually improve the business for us. So when we look at this, what are the challenges for network operations today? If we look at the picture up on the screen, uh, 10 years ago, three switches, a couple routers, maybe a single routing protocol, it was pretty easy for us to manage that. It wasn't that complex. When you look at it today, this is no joke. We have three-tier architectures. We have data center networks. We have WAN networks. How do we do SD-WAN? These are things that people are talking about. It gets really complex after a while because we have a lot of things that we're touching. Multiple routing protocols, redistributing them into each other. These are all things that people are doing today and it's not easy and we're doing it via CLI. We're not all experts, right? So how do we bring simplification to the network? Um, how do we bring a lot of devices on board really quickly? I have a new branch that's opening. Does it take me two weeks to go to that branch, turn everything on, do all of that testing? That's a ton of time for our employees right now. Um, and then how do I make network configurations quickly? Uh, maybe I want to bring a new product into place. We talked about uh, open, DS, open DNS or umbrella or acquisition. But if I want to change my DNS servers, I have to go all over the place sometimes to do that. So how do we, how do we reduce that? Uh, the other thing is uh, network and policies. Are they predictable? Uh, most people, uh, when I ask them, uh, what's your network security policy? Uh, what can accounting get to? They don't have answers. They have to go look at the configurations and are they the same everywhere? So what this means is we're looking at a fundamental shift in networking. Uh, we want to make a policy-driven network. And what this means is we want to take the network and the, the capabilities of the network and simplify them dramatically. So when we enforce policy, we don't want to just do it on wireless by itself or LAN or WAN by itself. We want to take that policy and spread it across every network device that's in our environment. So if it's your corporate data center, if it's your 30 branches, I want that same policy to follow all the way through so I'm not uh, giving my end user experience something different for every branch location they go to. So how do we do this? We need to automate this process. Automation is the key to this. So we take a single system, a controller, and we push our configurations out via the centralized controller. That's what we're looking at doing instead of touching every device individually. What this gives us is agility. So now when we start having agility in our network, we can create policy and it's completely automated. Now I can stop chasing the chickens and doing something else inside of the business and actually providing value back to, to them. So when we look at DNA Center, it consists of a, quite a few different things. Obviously security wraps around everything, but what we're gonna focus on for the rest of the time is the automation, the analytics portion of, portion of it. So, what are the top five advantages of looking at a digital network architecture? So um, we have our Cisco traditional switches and we have Meraki. 
Things that we can do is we can support brownfield. So we can take our DNA center, we can take your current environment, we can suck it into this tool, and we can actually get real information day one, right? So we talk about day zero, day end support. Um, right now, I have a lot of customers, when they order a brand new switch, what they do is they bring it back into the corporate office, it gets staged, it gets shipped out, it gets sent to someone in the branch office, they have to rack and stack it and plug it in. But if you could just take that switch, send it directly to that branch location, plug it in, it grabs the configuration, you save three days of a deploying one switch. That's a lot of time. And if you deploy a lot of branches and a lot of switches, imagine how much time you can save and how much travel expenses that may be. Uh, simplification through abstraction. Uh, how do I simplify this whole process? It's all about simplification. That's what all of our customers are asking for. Hey, I got this super complex network. I need to hire more people. I can't find the people. How do I simplify this? Right? That's the, what, what we're looking at. Um, everything being open, right? Open APIs, SDKs. Uh, can I take my ticketing system? So when I see an issue on my network, it automatically creates that ticket. It goes right into my sock, and now at that point, he has his ticket. He has a link to click on. Now we're taking the context that's happening on the network, and we can actually tell you what's happening and give you recommendations on how to fix it. Those are all things that are available today. And then taking automation and assurance. So what that means is taking the intent of what's happening in your business and applying it to your network, and then taking the context out of your network and applying that to your business. Let's use what's happening in our network, provide that to the business, so they can start looking at what's happening and what kind of bandwidth is being used, what kind of traffic's being utilized, and actually start target marketing uh, your clients. So when I look at DNA Center, our digital network architecture, this is an appliance. What we do is we have all of our switches, our routers, our access points, they all connect up to this thing and they start providing information to it. So there's four pillars when I look at this. The first pillar is all about design. So this is our physical map or our physical topology of our, our, of our locations. We have a location in Fargo, one in Bismarck, one in Alexandria. I fill out the form and I, I put, that on, put that into place. Uh, the other thing that we have is we have all our normal base configurations, DHCP, DNS, AAA, all of the above. What I can do is I can fill the form in for that too. Let's put all of our network settings into this. I'm designing my network at that point. So the next piece of it is, hey, I want to start provisioning. So now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say all my devices in the Fargo location, they're going to get these networking settings that's attached to this location. So now if I need to change DNS for that one location, I go in that one spot, change DNS, it pushes it out to all my switches, all my routers, all my wireless, and I'm up and running. It takes seconds instead of hours to make a quick change like that. And we can take it a step further. We actually start applying a policy to that. So uh, we look at policy in a, two different aspects, uh, macro segmentation and micro segmentation. So what macro segmentation means for us is uh, I have my employee network and I have my guest network. There should be no reason they should be talking to each other at all. That's macro segmentation. We have micro segmentation. So maybe inside of that employee network, what I have is I have multiple people. I have the accounting group, the marketing group, uh, and the IT group. The IT group should be able to talk to everyone, but marketing and accounting shouldn't talk to each other. That's micro-segmentation. And we're looking at that as a user, device, and group instead of an IP address. So we're simplifying all of this. And the last piece of it is insurance. Let's take all of the analytics that are happening inside of your network, syslog, NetFlow, DNS. Let's take all of that. Let's do analytics on it and actually give you real information that's happening in your network. Right now, a lot of people have different products, and they say, look at all of these switch ports. If they go above 90%, then notify me. You get a lot of noise. You might miss an alert. Those are all things that people are doing today to monitor their network. So what's the problem? This is what a typical network looks like when I'm uh, helping a lot of customers out right now, is they have Active Directory. So when I look at Active Directory, I define all my users and groups. I put my, my business structure in there. The issue with the network is I take my Active Directory structure, I mentally, in my mind, say, all right, marketing is VLAN 101, accounting is VLAN 102, so now what I'm doing is applying those groups and policies to IP addresses, and the only person that really knows about that is me, or maybe the quick document I made. So now when someone else comes into our environment and they have to figure out what's going on, it takes forever for them to figure out this mapping. 
So the next thing I have to do is I have to implement this everywhere. So I put these VLANs all over the place. I have to go to every branch site, every device. I implement that. Now I put layer three routing on there. Uh, and then I need wireless too, so I map the wireless SSID to it. Then we have to have some kind of policy. I can't have a flat network, right? We know that segmentation's a big deal. So I start supplying ACL lists, and I say, 101 can't talk to 102. And to the business, that means absolutely nothing. But to me, it means marketing can't talk to accounting. The other thing is, we have multiple tools that we're using. We're using CLI, wireless land controller, prime infrastructure, solar winds. We've got four counted off. Most people have those in their environment. So to control my network, to monitor my network, I have four or five different pieces or places I have to go to even get started. So what happens if I have to add another group or add another policy? It's tons of work. It's taking forever to do this, and I can't keep up anymore. So it's about automating the network. How do we do that? So today what we're doing is with DNA Center, uh, one of the things that we can easily do right out of the box, simple, simple thing that can add tons of value right away is image management. Um, I have a recent customer of mine. Uh, they had some switches that were outside in their DMZ. They were attacked. They got called by the FBI. And this is no lie. This happened right in North Dakota. They called me. They're like, what do we do? What happened? We did forensics on that switch. What we found out was they didn't upgrade that switch for five years. Five years. What happened was they hit a, they hit a vulnerability in that switch. That's how they were attacked. It's because they didn't touch it in five years. So now they're coming up with a strategy. I need to upgrade every one of my switches. That's what's priority for them because that's how they were attacked. So upper management says upgrade everything. And they're like, I have 400 devices on my network. How do I upgrade everything in one year or less? Well, something with image management, we can do that. We can say our gold star image is going to be version 16.6.3. I want to deploy to all of these switches. And I'm going to schedule it for Sunday from 1 o'clock. Go. Sunday at 1 o'clock, we're going to push that, uh, that, that image to the switch. Once that switch image has it, it's going to reboot. Upgrade, we're done. So something that this customer is saying, I don't know how we're going to do this. We're looking at putting a product like this into place and just using this one feature, and that's adding so much value to them and saving them tons of time and money. So the other piece is I get this product. How do I get all my devices into it? We simplify that. We say, let's well, scan your network. So my IP range is 1.1.1 through 2.2.2.2. I do that and it goes and finds all my uh, Cisco devices, brings them into this tool. What happens when it happens is I have them all in inventory. I can see everything. I can see what version of code they're on, um, what kind of devices they are, what's the serial number, what's the MAC address. All of those things are all on there. I can, I can see all that right away. So the next piece is we, start, we talk about design. And this design aspect is really uh, creating a site hierarchy. So uh, in this scenario, I have three locations, Sacramento, San Francisco, San Jose. And I literally build this out right in this dashboard just like this. I put the names of these places in. Then in San Jose, I have three buildings. I put those buildings in. That's how I create this template. And from there, I got three different floors. And my network settings for DHCP, DNS, syslog are those settings right there. I just fill the form in. It's very simple. But at that point, when I'm ready to provision, I say that these five switches are going to San Jose, building 22, floor three. And they get these settings. I say submit. They got all the configurations. It's simplifying everything. And it's taking uh, the complexity out of your network and reducing it dramatically. And the other thing is, I don't have as much user intervention. The likelihood of me making a mistake goes down dramatically. So we get to policy and segmentation. It's great. I've automated the network. I made it easier. But how do I get policy and segment segmentation in a place? That's the difficult part, right? So let's look at moving away from the IP address and moving to the identity. That's the first step. Identity is everything. So when we look at this, we have uh, different people. We'll focus on Josh. Josh is the person that we worried about. We don't care what his IP address. It doesn't matter anymore. And on our, on our network, we have different things. We have different devices. We have printers. Josh has to be able to print. We know that. There's other things in our network, like IoT devices. There's no reason why Josh should be talking to an IoT device. So what we do is we take these users and we put them into groups. Well, Active Directory, you did that already, right? You have Josh in the finance group. Let's just take your Active Directory structure, suck it in, and now we already have all this defined. Not a whole lot of work because we're taking your current structure already. 
So when we do that, what we do is we start creating our macro segmentation rules. We start creating virtual networks. And what a virtual network is for me is grouping everything together. So uh, finance, engineer, marketing is in a virtual network that's called ABC Industries. And I might have my guest, and they're gonna be in the guest virtual network. What that means is we're completely segmented. The default mode is a deny all. So what we really have is a stateful firewall or stateful device in the middle of that. Right integrated into our network. On a port level, I'm denying traffic from going to guest directly to my employee. I'm stopping it at the port. I'm not even bringing it all the way up to your uh, firewall or your data center. We're stopping it directly closest to the endpoint. That's a big deal. Then micro segmentation comes into place. I have more granular rules I need to make. I know IT can talk to everyone, but accounting, marketing can't talk to each other. So that's pretty easy. I'm gonna drag marketing up here. That's the destination. And the source is accounting. I'm gonna drag that over here. The contract is deny. I hit submit. It doesn't just go to one place, it goes company wide. Now they can't talk to each other. Complete segmentation happened in two seconds. Hey, for some reason they have to talk to each other now. Hit the delete button, 30 seconds, that config's pushed out everywhere. It's restored, they can talk to each other. I'm not touching every switch anymore, and I'm doing it in a very simplistic manner. So now when I hire a brand new person, they go to this GUI interface, and they say, marketing and accounting can't talk to each other, that's a contract you have in place. All right, cool, that's easy, everyone understands that. So the process starts, uh, Josh comes to the network, he authenticates via NAC appliance, and what happens at that point is we know everything about Josh. We know the user's Josh, virtual network, uh, where he's a part, and what group he's part of. Cool, he authenticated, we know who he is, his identity's been uh, proven, we allow him onto the network. Now what happens is you can see everyone else that's of the same color as him, right? That's how this works. So the next piece is uh, assurance. Uh, we created automation, we created policy, but do we know it really works? This is where assurance comes into place, and this is all in one dashboard right here. So what we know is there's hundreds of different points of failure between the user and the application. And it doesn't matter if my user's on-prem, uh, if they're here, if uh, my application's in the cloud, or if it's in my data center, there's different routes for all of that, and we need to know what's going on uh, so when we look at the application, could it be our WAN? Is it wireless? Uh, do, they have got, do they have good coverage at that time? Well, they're all things that come into play with this. The issue is, how do we see all of that? Well, we need to take all of the information that's coming from our network, do machine learning on that, and give you uh, real information. So what I see is, hey, I got P1, I got P2, I got P3, I got P4. It's very simple. I'm not writing policies to say notify me on this, the network is telling you about it because we're doing machine learning on it. So what we get to do is we know what the problem is, we know where the problem is, and we know how to fix it. So uh, imagine uh, you get a phone call and it comes in from an end user. Uh, I need to know what's going on with the end user. So that person calls in, uh, and what we do is we go into the 360 degree view. We go into the 360 degree view, we know everything about this device or this end user. So you say, hey, what time was your issue at? Oh, it was yesterday at two o'clock. Perfect, I'm gonna slide the slider back to yesterday at two o'clock. I have all the information that was happening on the network at that exact time. Uh, from that user that called in, I searched them. I can see that they had three devices. All right, those three devices. Two of them were on the network, one wasn't. And then when I go dig further on there, uh, what was the reason for it? Oh, he was authenticating with the user, wrong username and password. It tells you right in the dashboard. So that simple thing, that would have probably went escalated to level one, level two, and not the help desk would have been taking care of it on a bad username or password. It would have been one of your high-end administrators digging into this for quite some time probably, going into some kind of radius log to figure this out. So this is what it looks like. Uh, that user calls in and says, hey, my video was terrible. Um, and what happens is the engineer goes, looks back and says, hey, at that time we were actually having some network failures, I can see that. Uh, but they've actually been resolved since you've called in. I can see that also. So the guy, the guy says, hey, I got another uh, video conference call with the CEO in one hour. How can you, do you know this is gonna work? The guy on the help desk says, yeah, let me do a sensor test and a path trace. 
I run that sensor test and what that's doing is sending synthetic traffic emulating that call to see if it's gonna be an issue. Run the test, does the path trace, everything comes back as a green checkbox. Help desk guy goes, hey, it's gonna work, I can see that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it for three more times and if any of those times fail, what I'll do is I'll get a notification back from that. If they don't, I'm really confident as a help desk employee that it's gonna work. That's what we're going to, that's what the future is. Right now, that's not what's happening on most people's networks. So the answer for network operations, we need to simplify through abstraction, right? So we need it to be a controller-based atmosphere. Uh, the network needs to become agile and predictable. When we bring policy and we push that policy out via controller, it's very predictable what's gonna happen. I'm not touching every device anymore. Um, easy to roll out changes, right? So plug and play, maybe add an RMA, a switch. The switch goes directly back to that site. Plug it in, gets the same configuration. That's very simple. Um, and then uh, complexity reduction because of abstraction of policies. Um, when I hire a brand new person, do they have to study my IP addresses forever? It doesn't work very good anymore. Uh, they can come in and they can just see, this is, the business this is the business policy that we have in place, this is what's happening on my network, and I'm assured that it's working because I have the analytics that are coming out of my network and I know what's happening. So what we're really trying to do is we're trying to transform our business. So we want CLI, to go away, and we want to really focus on what really matters, and that's really having that single architecture. So uh, the Cisco booth in the little vendor hall that they have, I'm gonna be sitting out there uh, right after lunch, uh, I'll be here for the rest of the day. What I'm gonna do is if you actually have some interest in this, I can actually show you what this looks like. I got a full lab built out. I can actually show you what the analytics look like, how we design the network, how we actually provision it. It's very simple to see. Uh, got a half an hour time flux, time slot, so it's very hard to cover everything at one time, but if you have more interest in it, come see me, I'll have to show you live in person. So, appreciate your time, and I'm gonna let you guys get to lunch. Thank you.